Worshippers gathered as usual at the Moncton Mosque for sunset prayers on Wednesday evening, one day after Americans re-elected Donald Trump as U.S. President. People in the local community have noticed anti-Muslim hate speech increasing in recent years online. The former president of the Moncton Muslim Association is concerned about those anti-Muslim trends worsening here in Canada and translating into more frequent incidents of racism in day-to-day -day life. Within a few years, that four years, the hate speech, hate crime increased tenfold, like ten times, uh, because somehow he gives um, like a encouragement to racism, somehow he gives in his speeches or in his actions um, encouragement for hate speech and uh, a liberty to say anything, and that is concerning. That part of his uh, political side is very concerning for um, minorities, uh, Muslim communities, immigrants, uh, people of color. And that's what we fear now too, because if he's back in power, um, if he's going to use the same, same rhetoric and same uh, wording and same slogans, that is definitely going to increase um, hate crimes, hate speech, um, not just in U.S., but also in Canada. Mm -hmm. So we see whatever happens on the other side of the border, there are always consequences on this side of the border, and we have seen that um, the hate uh, crimes and hate speech increased last time, and we fear that that will happen this time as well. South of the border, reports of Islamophobic incidents already reached unprecedented levels over the past year under President Joe Biden. What we are currently seeing is one of the worst waves of Islamophobia and anti-Muslim sentiment that we have seen in the United States for decades. Earlier this year, our organization released our annual civil rights report covering incidents that occurred throughout 2023, including those final three months in which we saw the beginning of the genocide against Palestinians in Gaza. Earlier this year in July, we also released preliminary data from 2024, and we found that between January and June 2024, we received 4,951 complaints to our offices, which is a 69% increase over the previous year. Basically, what that indicates is that we are potentially on track to see an even worse year of Islamophobia. It's important to contextualize this horrific wave of anti-Muslim, anti-Arab, and anti-Palestinian incidents in global perspective, namely the Israeli government's continued assault against Palestinian civilians in Gaza and the United States government's continued support through weapons, as well as continued global support for the Israeli government as it carries out this massacre against Palestinians? Uh, yeah, definitely we notice, especially from last couple of years, there's a steady increase in like hate speech and postings, social media postings and uh, anti-Muslim, anti-immigration, um, anti, like, anti any other race. So it's, it's concerning. There is very small percentage, actually, less than 5% of the immigrants that come in, they are like asylum seekers or uh, they are, um, uh, you know, refugees and stuff. They're, that's like a very small minority. But somehow uh, the people who have uh, their own agendas or they have hate or something like that, they flip it around. They uh, use it as a false information and they portray that maybe everyone who's coming into Canada is a refugee or they're like illegally coming into Canada somehow, but that's not the case. A lot of people don't know the facts and what happened is when they post something like that on the social media, a uh, lot of people will not fact check them. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will just believe what they're saying and then that converts into misinformation, hate, and then uh, even sometimes into some hate actions um, hate crimes, and that's where we have to be very careful because if we don't stop it at the root, then it translates into hate speech and hate actions, and then, you know, it can be, it has, like, bad con uh, consequences. Okay. Uh, there are a few incidents that happens uh, for the past few years, and people have informed us. Um, there was, um, I can give you a few examples of this mosque, mm -hmm. Um, that uh, there was an incident where somebody brought a garbage uh, bag and put it in, on like mosque stairs. 
Um, then there was an incident where um, in Ramadan, which is like um, a holy month for Muslims, there was somebody outside the mosque yelling obscenities and uh, saying things that, you know, hurt Muslims or uh, they're against, uh, you know, different races. So things like that happened. Then there were a couple of incidents where uh, one of the school teacher who uh, she wears a hijab, her hijab was pulled by a student. Hmm. Um, some similar thing happened in a mall. Um, these are hmm. not very frequent incidents, but they do ha happen. Mm -hmm. And they happen, especially it's increasing for the last two to four years. It, this incident in Ramadan that you mentioned, was this uh, at the most recent Ramadan? It was a couple of years ago, I think, ago, yeah. yeah. So someone just got coming here and to this building where we are now, where outside, they outside the and yelling at, uh, yelling at worshippers? Yeah, actually yeah. I was there too. Um, so he was yelling at few people who were, uh, most of the people were praying inside the night prayers. Uh, in Ramadan, there's a night prayer which is called Taravi, Salatul Taravi. So a lot of people were praying that, but a couple of people went outside to see who was mm -hmm. doing, like who's yelling, right? Yeah. So I was one of them. I went outside and he was just yelling obscenities. I cannot even say that. Yes. And then that's what I was talking about. He was saying that you guys don't pay taxes and then you use our welfare money and stuff like that. So that's totally misinformation. Yes. Um, especially considering the immigrants and, and the Muslims, especially the Muslim community, they're the least recipients of those um, benefits. Oh. And um, vast majority of the immigrants and the Muslims, they pay a large amount of tax to mm -hmm. can Canadian uh, government. So this is just like false information. Mm -hmm. And he was like so confidently spreading that information and saying that, um, outside the mosque, and that, that's, that was uh, the incident that happened. Mm -hmm. And so, so it's a kind of failure to understand, uh, I guess for one thing, the contributions that people from the Muslim community uh, make, um, including to the economy. Yeah, tr that's true. Not just only financial contributions, mm -hmm. because there are a lot of doctors, engineers, mm -hmm. nurses, um, professors, they're different kind of people. Uh, even even uh, like day-to-day -day life, for example, taxi drivers, uh, shopkeepers, small businesses. So these are all contributors to the community. Mm -hmm. But at, on the other hand, also as the services, as I said, like having doctors in, in Moncton, having nurses and, um, you know, health workers in Moncton um, is a blessing, right? So we want more of them. And if some of them are being targeted just because of their faith or color of the skin, um, then it's heartbreaking. Hopefully the, the law enforcement agencies are watching it and they're, um, we trust in that because if, if something happens, uh, people who have that hate and they're posting stuff like that, if that translates into an action, that, that would be very, very concerning. Mm -hmm. So our, Trust is in the law enforcement agencies. They should be doing more, stopping these, uh, uh, you know, Facebook pages, social media posts, and not only stopping them, but also investigating to see if um, the person is a danger to the society mm -hmm. or the community. Um, I've noticed from monitoring these pages that uh, sometimes people are uh, giving links to um, other, even more sinister. Um, social networks, Gab Social is one example that's known as kind of a, a white supremacist uh, page um, or haven for um, neo-Nazis and the like. Um, just, uh, I don't know, uh, how concerned are you about um, this kind of, yeah, culture um, of, yeah, far right and hatred, uh, I, I don't know, advancing? That's really concerning. That's a huge concern because uh, they use it, like pages like that, as a breeding ground. And then they, as you said, they, they, their hope is that people will, some of them will move to the, their own um, media, which is more, uh, has more hate or is more um, white supremacist and stuff like that. And that's really, really concerning.
In the United States, ever since October 2023, our communities, our Muslim, Arab, and Palestinian communities have both been incredibly resilient, but have also been living in extreme fear, not just for family or friends in the Gaza Strip or in Lebanon, but also for their very lives. One of the highest reported categories that emerged from the 2023 data, particularly those final three months during which the genocide in Gaza was unfolding, we saw a steady increase in the number of hate crimes, everyday hate incidents against Muslims, Arabs, and Palestinians. So certainly this was something that was affecting employees. It was affecting, of course, students on university campuses, which we've seen very clearly over the last several months, but it has also significantly affected the everyday safety and the everyday ability of Muslims, Arabs, and Palestinians to go about their daily lives lives in the United States as well. Uh, here in Canada, we're already seeing reports warning about uh, an influx of migrants crossing the border uh, in, into Canada to flee Trump's America in response to this uh, pledge of mass deportations, uh, prompting in turn, I'm already seeing it today on local social media, more anti-immigrant sentiment. Uh, any comment on these ripple effects? As I mentioned, I think that there are some justifiable concerns about what this administration will affect into policy for immigrants, for Muslim communities here in the United States. And again, you know, following the results, we continue to call on the Trump administration to achieve one of its campaign promises, which was to promote peace across the world. And I believe firmly that if this administration works towards a peaceful resolution in Gaza, ensures a permanent ceasefire, ensures that the Israeli government is held accountable for what it has done to the Palestinian people, that we may very well see a decline in Islamophobic and anti-Palestinian sentiment, not just here in the United States and not just in Canada, but across the world.